Hello. Great day, everyone. I would like to warmly welcome you to our third quarter of the school year, 2020-2021. Yay! <laughs> For today, we will be having an asynchronous class. I, I just would like to uh, explain some reason why I opted to have an asynchronous class at the start of our quarter. It's because uh, I really wanted to meet both of the sections. But then some circumstances didn't allow that to happen. That's why I opted to have this asynchronous class to be fair with both of the sections. All right, so today we're going to learn another topic. Are you excited to learn about our topic for this day? All right, let's see. Here are our, our objectives for today's class. First is to describe the layout of the keyboard and also to identify the, the basic keys to use when we input text. All right, Sige. let's start with a simple question. Okay, so what comes into your mind when you hear the word keyboard? I guess most of you are familiar with the word key. Okay, it is what you, we usually use when we open gates, doors, cars, and maybe some of you are also familiar with the word board. Okay? Maybe some of you are already using illustration board. Some of you have seen already a basketball board. So you know how it looks like. Or probably some of you might think about this. What's that? It's a piano keyboard. Okay? But let me tell you that what we're going to talk about this day is not that kind of keyboard, but it seems like that also, okay? We're going to discuss about what we call the computer keyboard, all right? So we're going to discover, ano nga ba yung sinasabi na muna? Computer keyboard. So I know how, I know you know already how it looks like for we have already mentioned about it in the previous quarters, right? So, okay, we'll just deepen our understanding and knowledge about the computer keyboard, okay? So, the computer keyboard, it says here that it is the easiest way to input the information into your computer, okay? It is by typing it on your computer keyboard as what we have discussed in the previous quarter. The keyboard is an is it an output or input device? Of course, it is an input device. So um, we type information through the keyboard and then the computer receives it and we see the output in the monitor. All right? So you should be familiarized with its layout in order to, use, to ease your typing jobs. So in order for us to use the computer or the keyboard easy, we need to get familiar with it, okay? We need to familiarize its keys, okay? Para yung pagtatype natin mas maging madali. You know what? Kapag nasanay na kayo, kapag maging magaling na kayo mag-type, you don't even need to look at the keyboard to type the words that you need to type, okay? Do you want that to happen? Well, we'll discover how we'll make it happen. All right. So the layout of the keyboard is being known as QWERTY layout. And as seen also in typewriters. So it is patterned with the typewriters. Why teacher? Why is it QWERTY? Why not just A, B, C, D? It's because long, long time ago, when the keyboards are arranged alphabetically, many people get used to it so easily. So what happened is that most typewriters during that time are being jammed and destroyed <laughs> because of the improper use. And because many people will type as fast as they can because they memorized it already. Eh? They memorized A, B, C, D, the alphabetical form. So what the inventor of the typewriter did is that he randomized the letter. And then it was named after the first 
five, uh, no, <laughs> it's actually six. The first six letters of that randomized keys in the typewriter. So that's how QWERTY keyboard was formed, okay? So, the blinking bar line with every text is called a cursor, okay? So when you see a document or a spreadsheet, then you want to type something into it, you need to find that blinking cursor in order for you to know where you would start typing, okay? So it is an indicator, okay? So notice that we are now into putting text into the computer. Let's learn more about that, okay? So the text input, it means processing the correct keys on the keyboard to write letters, numbers, and symbols. Again, what are the things which you can input in the computer? It could be letters, numbers, or symbols. All right, but later we're going to learn more about that. But for now, let's try to look into the keyboard, okay? So I want you to get your keyboard, if you can. But if you're using laptop or cell phone, of course, you cannot do that. <laughs> okay, if you just can raise your keyboard and look at it closely, you see there, diba? As what it is written in the previous slide. It is composed of letters, numbers, and symbols. Of course, not all the keys in the keyboard are easy to understand, diba? There are some keys there which are not letters, which are not words, uh, which are not numbers, not symbols also, but words. <laughs> and most of you maybe don't, doesn't know what those, what those keys mean. So we're going to look into that and we're going to learn how to use those, <laughs> those alien keys, <laughs> no? Those keys which we don't know how to use before, all right? So this would, I, I'd like to make it more exciting. So uh, what I did is that I turned it into a game, just like what we did last, oh, no, it's not last part, it's in the first part, wherein we had an asynchronous class and I had the a timer, okay? For you to guess, what is the key which I will be flushing on your screen? Are you now ready to discover more about this keys? All right, so ready or not, let's go. Let's look into the first one. Okay, so this is the first one. So if you wish your input to be in capital instead of small one, this Google will help you capitalize and uncapitalize your text. What is that key? I'll give you 10 seconds to guess what key is it. Okay, and your 10 seconds starts. Okay, so once again, this is the key which helps you capitalize and uncapitalize your text. Next one, how about this thing? It is used to capitalize only the specific letters of a text. And here also, the user usually folds it down if they want to use it for more than one character. What key is it? Another 10 seconds and your 10 seconds starts. Oh. Alright, I hope most of you got it. Got it. <laughs> the correct answer is... 
Shiv. All right. So again, usually in, in order to capitalize some letters, we hold it and then click or press whatever letter we want to capitalize. All right. So it is also used to input symbols. Diba? You just need to hold it out also and then press whatever symbol you want to type. With that, the numbers in the number pad becomes symbols. So that's how we use the shift key. All right, let's proceed with the next one. The next one is used to input space between two words of sentences. Also, the longest key in the keyboard. What is it? <laughs> I thought, I think this is somehow easy, but you know, it has no name in your keyboard. So what is it? Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds to discover it. Because the correct answer is spacebar. Okay, so again, it is used to input space between two words of the sentence. Okay, so it's not just between two words, it could be between two letters, two numbers, two symbols. It's up to you, but basta, it is used to input spaces. All right, next one. How about this? It is used to move the cursor to the next line and commonly used for making a list or making a new sentence. Frequently used to execute applications. What is it? Okay, again, I'll give you 10 seconds to guess what is it. And your 10 seconds starts now. So what is it? It's the enter key. <laughs> I hope most of you got it correctly. Okay. So again, it is used to open applications. For example, in your desktop, you see the icons, right? You're going just to left click it and then press enter. Eventually, yellow. Like, it will open okay it is used also for making lists yes you need to enter and then list the next also you use to move the cursor to the next line okay so it has many uses as what you can see the next one all right <laughs> so according to what you can read in your screen it is used to correct the mistake in your Input. It erases your last input besides the cursor. So what key do you think it is? All right, I'll give you 10 seconds to guess that. And your 10 seconds starts. Backspace key. So again, it is used to erase your last input besides the cursor. It might be a letter, a word, or a symbol, but what it does is that it erases so that you will have the chance to correct whatever word you have mistyped or misput. All right. So are we clear with those keys? which we might not yet known before, or are you now familiarized with those unfamiliar keys? I really hope so. So to sum up what we have discussed for this day, I want you to remember that 
the keyboard is an output device. Ah, no, it's an input device which you can use to type in letters and numbers, also symbols. There are also certain keys that can be used in combining actions, ah, no, in combination to perform different actions, just like the key, the shift key, the caps lock key, the backspace key, the enter key, and the space bar. Okay, so I hope you have learned all those keys <laughs> in today's lesson. All right, CJ, if you have any questions, you can ask me directly through Messenger. Huh? But for now, allow me to introduce to you our activity for this day. <laughs> so here it is. So in your notebook, I want you to list down the missing keys from the keyboard. So there are 18 missing keys in the keyboard. One of those keys is being repeated. Okay, ito nasa bottom part. So, sige, sagutin niyo lang yung isa dyan. And of course, bonus na another point. So, meron na kagad kayo. Extra one point in case you'll be able to answer correctly what key had been doubled. Okay? So, <laughs> thank you so much for listening. And I'm really sorry that I cannot meet you personally, virtually right now. But I really hope to see you in our next class. I hope you've learned something essential from today's class. That would be all for now. Thank you so much, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.